and uh, my wife mm. has been uh, practicing in the, in Thai Thai tradition for a number of years, and uh, we uh, are very lucky to 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 dedicate our life in this practice and to uh, spread the practice. Uh, into the society. Um, a few days ago, uh, I and my son uh, took the plane to fly to friends from the U.S. And um, An Hương, An Hương is my uh, companion in life and. Uh, on this spiritual path, could not go because of her health and her uh, responsibilities at home. She uh, she looked into uh, our eyes and uh, told us in Vietnamese, "Bố đi cho mẹ, con đi cho mẹ." You go for me. And uh, she, uh, although she's not well, she, she was not well, she, uh, she took a lot of time to prepare something for us to carry along. Uh, sweet rice uh, cooked with uh, azuki beans. Uh, brown rice, uh, compressed and put into wrap into a uh, wrapping paper. A few emoji plum, and probably a lot of love. So we we ate that, and. The talk that I'm giving to you today has some flavor of uh, sweet rice, brown rice, umeoshi. <laughs> and uh, An Hương is talking with me now. I will share with you a love story with the background of suffering. And the love, love story happened a month ago in Kyoto, in Japan. We went there to a lead retreat. Uh, with the monastic in, uh, at the foot of Mount Fuji, that's one. And then we, I and Lan Hương, uh, went to Kyoto to lead another retreat there. And before the retreat began, I, Lan Hương and I had some time to talk with a gentleman, a Japanese gentleman. Let's call him uh, Tioshi. His father is a senior member of the local Sangha. He's retired, he's in the 70s. And uh, Tioshi, his son, while well, once a cartoonist, the one who draw cartoon, and then at some point in his life, he was, he fell into depression, and he he live he he, he live in kind of sick seclusion. He he just contained himself in an apartment without going to 
or trying to, to see anyone for the last 12 years. Three years ago, when we went to Japan, his father uh, invited to join a retreat in, uh, in Tokyo. He came, he attended uh, one session, and then he dropped out. His father, with his very deep love for, for, for Tiyoshi, wrote to us and would like to have a, a, some time of us to talk with Tiyoshi. Then we agree. So that morning, before the retreat uh, began, Tiyoshi came. He, he, he did not want to participate in the retreat in, in Kyoto. He refused. And people asked him if he needed a translator to translate from Japanese to English so that we can understand. But he said no. He, he tried himself. So we invited him to come into our room. And we sat down. He always looked down, down to the floor with his eyes not even half open, just one third open. And he began to share. And amazingly, his English was very good. He shared, he shared. He continued to share, we continued to listen. And suddenly, tears came out from An Hung's eyes, running on her, her cheeks. And my eyes became wet. Through his sharing, we get in touch with not only his suffering, but the suffering of the whole Japanese people. He's so smart. He, he can see the weaknesses of the Japanese lifestyle. And we share, he shares everything. And he did not want to conform to that lifestyle. But unfortunately, he, his... Uh, He's not strong enough mentally. That is why he fell into depression. And he, he does not want to see anyone because he, he sees that anyone around his world see him as a non-conformist. It's not a Japanese. He suffers a lot. You know what? When at some point he looked up and he saw tears in our eyes, suddenly his eyes become wide open. His heart was, is numb. 
his eyes are dry. He couldn't cry. And we really felt that we become part of him. Till she now has six eyes. Two eyes are somehow sick. And the four other eyes cry. Crying brings about healing. We cry for Jushi. His suffering inside his, himself begins to breathe, begin to flow. He transmitted his suffering to us. And we did not resist we allow that suffering to penetrate into ourselves because we are part of him at that moment. And his suffering has a chance to flow, to flow out. And miracle happened. We invited to stay for the retreat. And because the retreat was full, he said that we have a couch here. Stay. You are at the age of uh, our younger brother, so you are our brother. We, We really see you as our brother. Lie on the couch. We invite him to lie down, and he agreed. He lie down. We gave him a pillow, a blanket, and then he lie down. He stayed there. So later on, the organizer had a, a, a separate room for him. The organizer was kind enough to offer him a separate room because He's afraid to get in touch with anyone. But he agreed to stay. And then we are very careful about how to to embrace his suffering and himself throughout the retreat. So at lunchtime, we always told him that, go with us. We'll sit next to you. You sit here, I sit here, and don't sit here. Sit next to us. And then slowly, slowly, he, he can get used to to being into a group of many people. Do do she father was so happy? At the end of the retreat, he said, this is the most wonderful retreat of his life. He, he's been in the Zen tradition for a number of years, a senior, senior practitioner. The happiness, the most hap- the most wonderful and happiest moment of his life. And he burst into tears. And probably he, he later on said that I, I, ne- I never cried like that before. You know that at some point till she told us uh, I have enough. I don't want to go to the, the tea meditation uh, 
that afternoon. And we told you she that I go out for a walk. Then if you feel fresh, just come to the tea meditation. There's, there's no Dharma talk, no teaching, uh, there's no sitting. There's just tea, cookies, and singing, and dancing. So just come and enjoy a performance. <laughs> and guess what? He took a walk, and then he came back for the tea. And then at the end, at the, sh- the closing circle, he shared in front of 75 people. He shared beautifully. He said that when I, I saw you, An Hung, and I cry, suddenly he felt a relief right away. Dear friends, when you listen to the suffering of people, please do not try to analyze, to try a way out suffering, to help with the utmost willingness to help. You're trying to understand that person, to find a way to help that person. That's for later, not at the moment when you listen to that person. It's a practice. The practice of touching the the suffering in other people. Then it will help you to touch your own suffering. You soften yourself so that you can listen to yourself. It's very hard to listen to oneself. At the end of the retreat, he, he became uh, an, an engaged practitioner. He carried flowers and arranged mats. And, and a few days ago, we we had a Skype session with him. But in fact, he wanted to, to keep in touch with us, and he, he bought the webcam and <laughs> set up an account, Skype account, to, to talk with us. And we know that we need to keep in touch with him because all habit will come back. And that's happened. When we talked with him a uh, few days ago, we, uh, we asked him, did you go out for a walk uh, every day? As we advised him to get in touch with the uh, trees, the sky, clouds. And no, I didn't. And then we said, huh? How about, how about after the sky talk, uh, you, you go out and you walk for us? One hand holding and her, one hand holding me, and then walk first. Yes, I will do it. And he promised, and we know, we know that he do it. So that is uh, the importance of the sangha. Without support, without support, you will fall back to your own habit. That is a love story, isn't it? With the background of suffering, deep suffering. We have a few Japanese friends here. Uh, one is from Kyoto. He is well, one of the organizers of that retreat, Mayumi, mm-hmm. and other Japanese friends. Oh, we were not there, but uh, I want to share that with you as a, a gift to, to, 
ถือว่าเอาจาปนิสังกาตัวจาปนีปีโป You know that um, Thai taught us that um, if we are aware of uh, the suffering, we are mindful of suffering, then we will know how to alleviate it, to lessen it. But the difficulty is. We forget about our suffering most of the time. It's not because we want that, but there is a tendency in us that makes us forget about our suffering. When uh, you all experience that. When uh, I first came to Plum Village, uh, I had a beginner, beginner's mind. And for me, a beginner's mind uh, has those, uh, these qualities. There's uh, sincerity, there's uh, humility, and there's reverence. Hmm? When we come uh, When I came to Plum Ridge for the first time, I was very sincere uh, to all the practices. Uh, I, I participated in the sitting, the walking, the tea, anything, and I enjoyed everything. And then I, I was very humble because, oh, something new, and I can see that the people younger than I practice very well. They are happier than they were happier than I, so I, I I became very humble, and then I revere everything. There was that time uh, uh, living in uh, in uh, Lyon, uh, France, attending college there. So. Uh, I was in a dorm, and living in a dorm in a in a building, you do not have a chance to get in touch with nature much. When I came here, uh, everything is um, was very simple, rudimentary, yeah. almost nothing of comfort here. And I remember at the lower hamlet, uh, where one of the elder order of interbeing uh, live, uh, I, I, I used uh, his uh, toilet. Uh, and In the toilet, the wall is a. It's an old house, so it's a, was built with stone, and then they break a one stone to make an opening to the, the grass field. So there's no covering there. You can look through that the opening to the grass field. And uh, and uh, brother uh, Jinle have a, a small cup and then put a, a flower into the cup and put it on on that that support on the opening. And you know what kind of flower he put in? Grass flower, not roses, just grass. Cut just a few blades of grass with flowers. Put it. In. It was so simple, it was so pure that I I I I received it fully. 
my heart become open and the dark ma stream will just come in with this as a space with the nature with high talk and then i received uh, uh, 14 minus trainings in fact it's in 85 training but 92 the dark ma left <laughs> and over time <laughs> I realized that I, I, I did not begin the minds anymore. I thought that I know the four, four noble truth. It's easy. I can, I can cite them from one to four. <laughs> the A four path. Yes, I can recite from one to eight. And things simple like uh, the the grass flower. Did not touch my heart anymore. What happened? What happened? There's a phenomena that I that I call wearing off. Wearing off. Compassion can wear off. Understanding and practices. Well, they still there with some kind of form, but the depth is not going further or even shallower. That phenomenon wearing off over time. And then We begin to look into it to see why. You know that uh, the search for a spiritual path may just begin by a simple question, a very simple question. And on 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 the path of uh, finding the answer, you get enlightened, and you can go further. You know that lately I I saw a. Uh, A video, a short video clip, with the title "Why, Why Do People Eat Meat?" by Melanie Joy. Then what what struck me is that she start she started with just a simple question, like the Buddha. The Buddha asked the question, "Why people get old? Why people get sick?" and so on. And she started with a simple question: Why people eat meat? But in fact, not that question. She 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 had a uh, a dog, a pet, no. And then she had in in her mind: Why people eat meat, beef, but not dog meat? Why? They all animal. And then she started on a journey of finding the answer. She she did a thesis in Harvard to find the reason why people eat meat. Just that on that theme. And she came to some kind of insight, enlightenment. And now she shared that. Many of us. So, if you have a chance, please check on that. It's very enlightening. The process is the same as the Buddha. We start with a simple question. Just be curious about simple thing, and then you embark in a discovery journey, and then you find the answer. Now, our question today is, why? We forget about our suffering, even if our utmost intention to look, to embrace our suffering. But I want to share with you another love story. With the background of suffering too.
and I would like to invite it to you, she, to be here in spirit. Now it's your turn to listen to my suffering. I invite it. I would like to invite all of you to listen to my suffering as we listen to Tiyoshi. Tiyoshi, you know that when you have a chance to listen to our suffering, my suffering, then you have a chance to go further. I would like to invite my family, my blood family, my mother and my siblings to listen to my suffering. They are, all, they are also there. My father passed away a number of years ago. I still have a mother and uh, five, uh, five other siblings. They are all younger than I. We had a chance to live together for some time, I, my wife, and my blood family. There was a, there was differences of uh, family culture, points of view, way of living. And it has caused some conflict. And then later on, there, unfortunately, there has been more and more suffering because of unfortunate circumstances. Now the communication between us is cut off. Or when we see each other, maybe just saying hi, hello, but we cannot go further. The suffering had been uh, waiting on, on me in my heart for a long time. That I, sometimes I, I have dream. In one of the dream, I saw my father. And I told my father, Father, I, I, I feel so bad. Now, your children cannot communicate with one another happily, joyfully. Please help. And my father, in that dream, just cried. My father went through a lot in his life. During the time uh, when there was the, the war between the Vietnam and France, 
at one point. The French army, the French troop, um, I think it's uh, Sung the, uh, the Legion, the Legion, the Legion group, was ambushed by the Viet Minh, Viet Minh, the communist uh, group, and a few of them died. And you know what? What was the revenge? That French group, uh, soldier, Ask all the people from that village to come out. Women, children, and they killed them all. Three children of my father died. He was not in the village at that time. He had four children, and three of them died. My, these are half brothers. So, his wife, uh, my my dad's wife, his wife, died after giving birth to the fourth one. Three of them died. Young, young people died. When he came back home. Uh, He suffered so much. He suffered so much that I, I heard the story from one of my elder cousins that after one night, his hair turned white. So life go on. Life went on. He uh, remarried with my mother now giving birth to more children. And at the separation of Vietnam in 1954, my parents moved south. And I have a, an older brother. I'm the second one, older brother. He was uh, one year older than, than I. My brother is a very smart young boy. She's loved by many teachers. At the age of 12, he gets drowned in the river. Misfortune and misfortune just came, came, came into my, 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 my father. In the South, I never saw him doing anything else than going to work and go back home. He does, he did not go to have a drink somewhere, or anything. a very disciplined man. He did not talk a lot. He did not talk a lot. He just, just knowing that before, he's a very wild man. Never, he, 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 he was never at home when he was in the, in the north of, of Vietnam. He just hang, was just hanging somewhere. But now he's a disciplined person. And for the first time, I saw him cry at the loss of my, 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 my next older brother. He cried. He cried so much. I never saw a person who was crying that much. My mother did not cry that much. Little bit, but not crying. He cried so much. And till now, I realize that 
His suffering has numbed my heart. I could not cry. I was so young. I was 11, 11, 11 years old at that time. I was to understand what suffering is. Just experience that and become a victim of it. I become numb. My emotional body just close up. Dear friends, after many years of practice, I came to an understanding that we need to be curious about our suffering, to understand the suffering of our parents, our siblings, and ourselves. And that is our, our task. Our task. If you love Thai, if you love the Dharma, this is your task. When you understand your suffering, then you can You, you be on the path of healing right away. And I was curious about my father's suffering. And over the years now, I, 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 be, I, be, I begin to understand his suffering bit by bit, bit by bit. I understood, I understood why after that, after that event, the death of my, uh, in the river of my older brother, that he, he started to chant the sutra every night for one hour, for the whole year, the, the flower ornament sutra, it's like that. He read one time, twice, and many times for one year. I know, I know that our fear to lose one more child, me. In fact, he just direct that, that chanting to me. The next one, he's afraid that life, the world would, would, take, would take another one, another child from his life. I was living, uh, and then at the age of 12, my family moved to the capital of the south while um, I was staying in a province uh, about 70 kilometers uh, south of, of the capital with my, uh, my half-brother. Half There's only one half-brother left. He, he, he is uh, 24 years older than, than I. He's in the army, the Vietnamese army. So I was living with him to teach his children mathematics and so on. And I, have, I, I had a chance to visit my family. I, uh, I took the bus every year to, to, to go home to visit my parents once or twice a year. It's not um, here you can have a car and just drive back and forth. And whenever he, he took me to the bus station, and I, I, I sat in the bus, he burst into tears again, same tear as he, as he cried when he lost his, uh, my, my older brother. The other, the other sibling in my family did not experience that, just me. And then I, when I left uh, Vietnam in uh, 1973 to go to France to attend college, he burst into tears again at uh, uh, the airport, the Tân Sơn Nhất airport at Saigon. 
And you know what? This is the last time I saw him. I didn't know that. Two years later, the communists took over the South. And there was no communication between people living outside the country and inside the country. I lost the communication with my family. And he died a number of years later. Now when I look back, I said to myself, if I, 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 I knew about hugging meditation, I could have hugged him once at the airport. So dear friend, you know the practice. Please hug your beloved one now or tomorrow. Don't wait. Anything can happen. If you have problem with your family member, resolve it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. You may not have any chance to do it in the future. You know that my father passed away when I came to the U.S. to visit and Hung's family. We, we, we were friends at that time. And when my, my brother called from the friends to let me know that uh, my father passed away, suddenly I burst into tears. My, my stomach, my guts, my incessant become so t- became so tight. I never experienced something like that before. And I cry, I cry. I never cried like that before. Just cry. Pure, pure tears. A, a very pure expression of suffering. Now, as I look back, I see that the, the event, the happening of the passing away of my father is a blessing. He revived my emotional body with his death. It's a blessing. It's an event to celebrate. Do you see that? Do you see the, the happiness from the suffering? And it has opened the heart of my future. Parents in law. You know that An Hung's father and mother are very conservative. They would they would not accept me easily in, in her family. But that that pure crying has opened their heart. And now An Hung is my companion. So I, when I look back, I always think, oh, my father died because he wanted to help me <laughs> to, to enter my, my wife's family. So there's something very deep here we do not know. 
We need to see the goodness of the suffering. Shouldn't avoid it. I have a younger brother. So I came into this practice. I, I got to know the practice and I fell in love with it. I introduced it to my brother. He liked he likes to. So he uh, he uh, he liked the practice. He he was one in our sangha, local sangha. And we, we, we went through a lot with him, a lot of suffering. Went through a lot of suffering with him. <coughs> we, with our whole heart, we, want to, we wanted to, to, to try to, to embrace and help. But I believe that his, suf- his suffering is too big. that he, he could not communicate with us anymore. And with my, our intention to, we may, we may be unskillful in our interaction with each other, but we know the practice we once offer him the practice of beginning anew, and he refused. And we try to reestablish that com- the communication in many ways. Sometimes uh, An Hương uh, sent send him a chocolate. <laughs> uh, But, uh, but with not much success. So the suffering is still there in my heart, in my family heart, in my younger brother heart. That I had another dream. This time I had a dream in which I went to see Thai. You know what I did? I took off my brown jacket. I folded it. And I presented it to Thai. But sure, dear, dear Thai, I feel that I did not practice enough. I am not skillful enough to to create a safe environment for our family, my blood family, to talk, to share, to cry and laugh with us. All the practices that I learned from from, from, from from the village, I put them into practice and it seemed that it uh, still haven't worked until now. I feel so, so bad, so sad. I don't know if I can teach people to be happy if I cannot make myself and my blood family happy. So please take take my my jacket, please.
Thầy, dear Thầy, I do not want to be a Dharma teacher. I do not want to be an order of interbeing. I do not want to be a practitioner. I just want to be a human being that can open my heart so that suffering is just pure, just raw like red blood. And you know what Thay told, told me? Thay in me, told me in, in that dream, not <laughs> historical Thay out there. Drink your tears, not drink your tea. Drink your tears. And I said, it's like taste, taste your tears. Taste your suffering. See the, the saltiness, the sweetness of it. Let it flow like a river. From time to time, I said to myself, in fact, it's like a conversation between myself and my siblings, especially my young, young brother. Young brother, you know that we are children of the same parents, blood, blood brother and sister, blood brothers. We are students of Thai. We are the children of Thai. Our parents, father and mother, would be, how do they feel if we, we are like that? How they feel if we are like that? Following the same path of practice. What is the proof of the practice? If we love Thai, We need to put all our effort into reconciliation. If one beginning and you fail, we will sit back, visualize, contemplate, and find other conditions to make a beginning new successful. If the second beginning new fail, sit back and find other conditions favorable condition for beginning new to succeed. And we continue like that. It must be our ideal. We cannot, we cannot delay it. As a Thai student, it's an emergency. We cannot delay it. Just thinking, what would Thai feel if he He's not that. Is he happy? How can we offer Thai happiness? It's time.
Krista. Dear friends, everything comes from our mind. If you have an intention to build a plum village, plum village will take the form. If your intention and with whole heart, with your whole heart to do something to alleviate the suffering of your beloved one, you can do it. You can do it. And don't wait. Because your compassion wear off. Thank you, dear she. Thank you, dear friends in the community. I just want to to be like dear she, unable to share. So that my suffering can flow like a river out of me, out of you. We can cry together. Thank you for listening.